Hello y'all, this is the Red Flood mod for Hardspine 4, a world where post-war peace after World War 1 was never a reality. We're going to Asia to play as a country named Celtorusia, led by Alexander Kerensky. The 1919 revolution was a failure, so the Republicans and the Socialists fled to the Far East and created their own democratic rump state. This is the result. We are led by the Social Democrats. Our army consists of infantry, tanks, and cavalry. Besides that, we do have a small little navy that is probably best used for defensive purposes. Let's start the focus tree, a dawn in Celtarusia. We do not lack commanders at all, but we do have no field marshals, but to make up for that, I guess we have Leon Trotsky instead, which is just terrific. On the weapon side of things, we do have up-to-date guns, but we'll need weapon equipment, and we do have motorized researched already, and our tanks are from World War I, which is better because we could have none at all. And we do have artillery researched. You remember I showed you a dawn in South Russia? Well, it gets worse. We have a famine to deal with instead with some bad effects. The harvests are at their all-time lows. The droughts are at their worst. And everyone outside of the big cities is starving to death. A starving man who has lost his wife and his children curses the leader of this nation, Alexander Kerensky. A civil war begins between revolutionary Japan and Japan. World news, a famine in South Arusia. I wonder where that place is. Due to the terrible strife with the nation, we have an ultimatum for Kerensky. He must either resign or demand that the Supreme Soviet rule go. Kerensky will leave. We must choose a new leader, and that leader will be the utopian socialist Alexei Gastiv, who will seek more power than his predecessor ever had. The new premier of the Russian Republic, after saying only a sentence, fires the whole Supreme Soviet using only a piece of paper. Our new name is the South Russian State. We got a new flag, and the ruling party is now the accelerationist, somewhat common in this mod's world. Alexei Gastiv in real life was killed in the Great Purge and he is well known for being a pioneer of scientific management in Russia. He was also a poet and sought to make workers into human robots. All of his special exclusive focuses have quite some interesting wording to say the least. We invade the Anhui clique, what could be our weakest neighbor, to make them a puppet and beef up our military and also get military EXP. A new name for South Russia, but permanent this time. It has become the one state. All of the government spots are filled, so we are getting the most buffs we can possibly get with these politicians. The World War One era tanks are upgraded to T-26s. We could try to get medium or heavy tanks, but our main challenge will always be industry. Our next war is with the Fiang Tian clique because we want to tap into their manpower resources. Fiang Tian has become Mentetsu. Our next target will be the Ma clique, which we will fight from the Anhui state's borders. There's a new hit film in the one state called The Liquidator. The plot consists of capitalists in America in the future sending back assassins through time machines to kill Comrade Gatze, but not to worry. The state sends back the robot, The Liquidator, made with the brains of a fallen Soviet soldier to save him. The national focus, just another number, is completed. Alexei Gasta becomes op dash zero one. All of the generals we have available follow suit as well with their names consisting of letters, numbers, and dashes. All of the exclusive focuses with gas tab slash op zero one are completed, so we will now be taking the path that will lead to foreign diplomacy. The Beiyang government is at war with Taiwan using that opportunity. We will go to war with the Beiyang government to get some of that free real estate. Officers from Yukushi at effect, we seized the main railways and make sure they capitulate within a day, so we have annexed all their land. The state of China is under our thumb and we will prepare a clash in the north with the Siberian general government. The good news is there's not really a Russian empire anymore because the Novorossian general government beat the legitimate government in a civil war, so that whole area has been taken up and there's no real combined faction to face us. The Siberian war has begun. Mm, more war goals, but they're in Central Asia this time, so isn't that nice? The front in Siberia is not very large, so to fix that problem, we are preparing operations to invade the Baikal Hatmanet, make that into a puppet, and also attack the Imperial Authority and annex them. Things in Europe are getting wild. German Socialist Republic is invading Scandinavia, and they are also at war with France. Our enemies have formed the faction supporters of reactionary. We are fighting them, and now Tibet. The realm of saints beat the Imperial Authority and took all their land before we could attack, so we will be invading them instead. Japan, over with their civil war, now chooses to attack us 
over the land of Mantatsu. The Siberian general government is falling and will lose soon. This is good because we have sent divisions hastily back to the east to deal with the invasion from Imperial Japan. Siberia is now fully under our control, well, except for the bits that Japan has taken, and Tibet is made a puppet. With our victory, war in Central Asia is now a possibility, and it will be easier than it was with the Siberian general government. Army High Command must be selected. We will go with E-349, who is advocating for autonomous divisions, a controversial but ideal choice for our nation. Single command principle over prevent the new Red Napoleon. The situation in the east near our capital is looking more grim with a new front opening near Korea, but we shall continue our ambitions in Central Asia and take out all the nations that will be opposing us there. Once they fall, we will be one step closer to taking Moscow. Novorossian General Government finds themselves at war with a lot of nations in Eastern Europe, but meanwhile the World War drags on with France having fallen and the United States in Brazil while we struggle onward fighting Japan. Prussia is fighting Poland who until then have been helping their allies fight in Russia. Even if they are to die off, it will weaken Russia for our own invasion. Young Russia hail victorious even though we haven't taken Moscow yet. We get a lot of new cores. The United Kingdom is fighting the international and what's left of the League Solar that is mostly now stuck in Africa and Italy. The war with the Novorossian general government begins with a bang. Poland and friends may end up making it to Moscow before we do. The Netherlands fights a sea of red and the Americans land in Italy. For our military focuses, we strengthen discipline and go with Volon Petsai. Our adventures in Western Russia are success. Now we can consolidate control down in Central Asia, and over in the Far East, things are looking even more bleak with our capital and a lot of our industrial heartland having fallen to Japan. We don't have any focuses on them in particular, but we do justify war goals on the Kazakh Red Army, and will invade the Xinjiang Autonomous Province next to the Anhui State. Bukhara and their neighbor, the Turkestan-Caspian Union, are no exceptions to our goals. The Red Army will be next after the Union falls. I'm not really sure if they even have any divisions. They are part of the faction with the German Socialist Republic, though. A spread out and overextended Japanese military loses Korea and is fighting an offensive led from Mantatsu. Armies prepare to assault the Southeastern Union near the Caucasus, and Japan is being pushed back with our capital having been reclaimed. Japan has been pushed off the mainland entirely, with the only division left there is a unit from the Federal Republic. Republic of India. The war in the Far East having been stabilized, armies are ready to prepare for the war with the faction led by Poland. Ukraine shows the most resistance once we attack, but Poland soldiers are elsewhere in another conflict, so we just sweep through their land. One army is allocated to deal with the Xinjiang Autonomous Province, but over in the west, the Poles have awoken to our shenanigans and are scrambling their defenses. To win the war faster, war goals are readied on the Baltic General Government. The South Erosia Tree is finished. It is pretty good, lasts until at least the end of 1945. The war in the Baltic didn't really go as planned because they joined the Third International and a ton of German soldiers are rushing in to save them. A lot of enemy divisions are trapped in the state of Roslavl. If they are unable to break out, that would be a huge loss for their army. Ukraine is the first member of the Intamarin to fall to us and Belarus will be next. In Italy, they have stabilized their situation and the United States has landed in Brittany. The Intamarium is defeated completely so we will take all of their land and march on toward Berlin. Germany loses the war. Hungary hangs on by a thread, but not for much longer. It is at this point I remember was still at war with Japan. While we prepare for an amphibious assault in Japan, we will launch a war with Finland. The League Solar is still fighting the Commonwealth of Nations, thus we end up with France versus the United States in France. France's ally, the Italian Combine, is taken out by the United States, so the odds are not very much in their favor. With aerial superiority established over Japan, we shall soon have paratroopers landing there. Never mind, we won't need any paratroopers because the British have completed an amphibious assault and we will just piggyback off of them. If 20 plus nukes aren't enough to destroy their defense, I don't know what will. Japan has been the toughest adversary we've had this entire game. It took seven years just to get here, even after we liquidated Russia. Imperial Japan is defeated. They had become a leading major power of the Third International, so the war's ending 
was tied to them, so Germany and all their allies have lost as well. The one state controls the lands of the Russian Empire more, we get a ton of puppets, and we'll probably, I assume, pursue a future of endless automation. I'm going to end the video here. Make sure to check out the mod in the description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications.